live from Chicago, Illinois, it's theCUBE, covering Veeam On 2018. Brought to you by Veeam. We're back at Veeam On 2018. You're watching theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, Stu Miniman. Stu, always great working with you. Bruce Shaw is here, he's the Senior Director of Global Alliances and Industry Solutions at NetApp. Great to see you, thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having me. So I got to start out with NetApp. I mean, we have followed NetApp for decades. Um, you know, from the very beginning, back when I was at IDC, Stu, you were probably still in your mother's womb. Um, <laughs> but you guys are, are back uh, in a big way. I mean, for a while there, it looked vulnerable. You took advantage of the Dell EMC merger. You're gaining share again, you're growing, stock prices up, there's a spring in your step. What's going on? Well, a lot of things are going on. I think um, we've had a lot of leadership additions to the company. Henri Richard joined and took over as, as the CSO of the company. We've got a new uh, CMO uh, in Gene English. But you know, more importantly, a lot of the areas that we were late to the market in, and candidly, we've admitted we were late. We, we didn't have a good Flash story a couple of years ago. We've been very aggressive with Flash over the last 24 to 18 months. Uh, we're now the fastest growing fa Flash service or ser storage provider out in the market. And we think we'll exit this year as number one. In fact, we think that's the current course and trajectory. We're very happy with where that's going. Uh, the FlexPod partnership with Cisco was great this past year. We had a record year in converged infrastructure, which was a, a down market. We picked up about 13 points a share, according to IDC. So a lot of the cylinders are starting to fire, but the one that is probably the biggest and the most shocking for folks is three, four years ago, the belief was that cloud was going to kill you know, on-prem storage for companies like NetApp. And I think the one thing that they did right ahead of the curve was they embraced the cloud. They've got great partnerships with Google, Amazon, the, the hyperscalers, and cloud, uh, you know, uh, strategy and the business that drives the company there is the fastest growing part of the company and Anthony Lai runs that team and it's, it's doing an amazing job. So explain how, and you're absolutely right, um, many, most, Frankly, myself at times, you know, felt that way. Right. Explain how cloud is a tailwind and not just a one-way street into the Roach Motel. Oh, well, it's, you know, there isn't an enterprise today that isn't thinking about cloud in some way, shape, or form, right? Now, you have prognosticators on either side saying it's all going to the cloud or something less than that. But the truth is when you look at a strategy like ONTAP and the ability to move your data, whether it's on-prem, or to the cloud and manage it through our data fabric story, that's where NetApp really starts coming into their own. And I think, again, that's where we've been able to take advantage. And it's not just having it one way or the other or being good just with the hyperscalers or good with the guys that want to be secure because most companies do a hybrid story and they want a bit of both. Well, I think the, the one thing that I would observe about NetApp, I've been following the company for many, many years, and which I think gives you an advantage is NetApp really has always had storage services in software that were largely decoupled from the hardware. Right. And that allowed you to get into to cloud early, don't you think, Stu? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, and Bruce, uh, you know, we're here at Veeamon, <laughs> and their message sounds a lot like that to me. So maybe help explain, we were just talking to Veeam CMO, yeah. is when you hear some of the descriptions of storage services, software, multi-cloud and everything, right. NetApp and Veeam sound alike, how are they Complementary, and you know, oh, maybe where do they bump against each other? Yeah, yeah. I'm well. You know, we're, we both compete in the same market, which is storage. So of course, there's areas where we're going to compete with each other, yeah. but we are very complementary in terms of the story and the markets that we serve. Right? NetApp is incredibly strong in the enterprise. Veeam has a great commercial channel presence. So from a route to market, there's a lot of complementary stuff we do with each other. Price point in terms of where we hit the market and the things that we go after. Um, we have a lot of opportunity where there's not overlap to help each other out. To the point there now, the relationships evolved over the last four years where we're actually doing OEM of each other's products. We've got uh, our E-Series we just announced yesterday that we're OEMing with these guys, which again is targeted at exactly those markets. And it's, um, you know, the, the story between the two that we're both at our core not hardware companies, not storage companies, but data management companies really is where this starts to come together and, and play well. 
And the fact that they're mutually supportive of each other makes for a really strong value proposition for the customer and the channel, especially the guys like the service providers or you know, hybrid cloud providers, it's a, it's a, it's a big time story for them. So you're growing, with the, the partnership with Veeam is growing. Right. You got a combination of you know, trends that become tailwinds, but then you've got right. execution. Can yes. you explain what are those tailwinds and what's the execution ethos with the partnership? We are a channel only company for all intents and purposes. I mean, I, so, I don't know what the know, number is now, but you've always been very, it, very high. Yeah, no, so you know, we look at the businesses that we drive and yeah. channel is at the core of what we do. So when you have a tailwind like, you know, where we are with Flash and the growth there, the channel partners are making more money, the, the programs that are coming for them, we're not taking business that they're doing today and pushing it towards the cloud. Again, we're talking about the story that's transitory between the two. So for a lot of the, the channel providers that are out there getting in the market, that's a very powerful story for them that it's not a competitive business. We're not going to try to create our own cloud service to take away from them. We want to help them as they migrate between the two. All right, Bruce, one of the other areas we're spending here and a lot about at this show that I think lines up with NetApp is the analytics and AI. Can you maybe talk about how that you know, ties into the products? Yeah, I mean, you look at uh, a lot of these markets like AI, like uh, you know, analytics in terms of um, you know, what companies are doing, it sheds off a tremendous amount of data, right? And that data is at the heart of what they want to analyze and go through. And when they um, you know, bring those things to market, the goal is how I quickly move it from where I'm capturing it to where I need it. And ONTAP does a really good job of doing that uh, in, in terms of being, a, being able to take the data to where they need it, whether it's at the edge, or whether it's back at the core of the company so that you can actually do the real work with it and gain the insights that drive the business. Bruce, what's the resale agreement that you have with Veeam? Can you explain that? So we have Veeam on our price list. Our sales reps can sell Veeam, can be compensated for it, um, vice versa. They can, they can absolutely hook in and drive with NetApp and now that we're getting products like E-Series where their product is embedded on ours, that only strengthens that kind of motion. So for a NetApp sales rep today, if they have an opportunity where Veeam is needed on it as, as part of the offering, it's absolutely in their wheelhouse to go sell it and they get the same level of love and attention from a quote and comp standpoint that they would if it was NetApp only, only product. So this is kind of a, an interesting innovation that, that Veeam, I think, has been out in front of. They, they and I don't, I, don't, I don't know how they do it, Stu, but I think Veeam <laughs> understands the lifetime value of a customer and is willing to make, put you know, equity, sweat equity into a deal yep. as part of a partnership to make it transparent to a, a partner sales force. Yeah, and absolutely. That is, that's innovation in business model. Absolutely, we, we're very proud of our sales force and the, the work that they're able to do. You know, we, we view ourselves as kind of the last big enterprise standalone storage company that's out there doing this. And you know, I, I run strategic alliances and some partners integrate really well with our sales guys, others it, it's, it's more of a, you know, it, it requires more work. To your point, Veeam has done a superb job at identifying how and where they play with our folks and, and getting together where we go to market together. You know, it's interesting, we used to, you know, several years ago now, you know, ask the question, can NetApp, you know, remain independent? We've seen all these independent storage companies kind of go away. Used to have this conversation with uh, David Scott at 3PAR all the time. Right. You know, um, EMC itself sure. wasn't able to maintain. And then NetApp got to the point where it was almost too big for an acquisition. And, and, and although you know, the stock price was down, everybody, NetApp was the rumor of, of, of M&A more than any company <laughs> I can think of in the storage business. But now you're seeing sort of antithetical to what most people expect. It's kind of like the cloud we were talking about before. Is, Storage companies emerged. You know, Pure was the first one over a billion since right. NetApp. Yep. Um, what are your thoughts? And what's I wonder what the you guys must talk in the hallways about that whole the, the dynamics of the industry. It seems like it's a vi it's still a viable business model to be best it's, of breed. It, it's very viable. So I took over running the strategic alliances at the beginning of January, and um, yeah, my my dance card's full. I can't believe the number of folks that are calling up. Wanting to partner, I think we've gotten uh, much more mature in terms of how we view the market and our ability to get strategically with other companies to be successful. And there absolutely is always going to be a place out there for a best of breed story. So, you know, customers want the best technology, 
uh, that they can get to handle their business needs. And if we partner with great partners, whether it's Veeam or others, to provide that for them, I think the viability of NetApp only gets stronger, not weaker. It's interesting because you got, now you got NetApp, Pure, Nutanix, soon to be Veeam as billion dollar independent, yeah. uh, you know, pure play companies in the storage business. Isilon couldn't get there, Data Domain couldn't get there, Compellent couldn't get there, yeah. Three Par couldn't get there, Left Hand couldn't get there, Equal Log, I can go down the list. They never were able to reach that escape velocity and maybe it is cloud. Maybe cloud is that weird tailwind for people who can figure out how to take advantage of cloud and hybrid cloud. Your thoughts? Yeah, I, I, I think it is, number one. I think also the companies that you mentioned at various times, and I, I mean, I'm a hardware industry dinosaur. I've been around forever. A lot of those companies you talk about, the, the difficult moment from them was, hey, we're a storage company, now we want to add compute, or now we want to go into this part of the market that put them at odds with the guys they were partnering with. You know, George, our CEO, has been absolutely maniacal with his vision of our path forward is in managing data, period. Whatever form that takes. We don't need to be a compute company. We don't need to be a networking company. We want to be a data company. And I think how that then drives the decisions, whether it's partnering with cloud, whether it's going into new markets with HCI, even if it's things about transforming the legacy data center from you know, traditional, uh, uh, data center and how it's managed on-prem to something that's all flash driven and much more efficient and much more programmable than it was in the past, so it's easier to, to uh, administer. Those are the areas that we can go innovate, and as long as we're partnering with the right partners out in the industry, that makes us a very good, viable destination for the customer without worrying about, well, do we have a compute node? Do we, are we in the server business now, or are we suddenly in the, in the switch business? Those are things that, they're not even on our radar. Yeah, I mean, you guys are in a unique position from, from that standpoint. You're, you're very large now. You're the largest independent storage company, so everybody right. wants to work with you. You don't bump up into these, these adjacencies. It's, and, and you can make bets. You can place your chips uh, in areas, right. and it's, and, and with the, whereas some of the startups, there's tons of innovation, but it's really right. hard to hit that escape. The amount of resources right. that you need, the money you need for promotion, the, the, the yeah. talent war that's going on out there, uh, the go-to-market challenges, the, right. the partner challenges. So you guys are in a pretty good position right now. We really are, and I think we've, we've actually done a lot of the restructuring work internally to continue that and capitalize on it. Probably the biggest change, which uh, outside the company, most folks wouldn't notice immediately, is that we moved at the beginning of this year to a three distinct business unit structure where we're focusing on three parts of the business to go forward. And we've got you know, our, our cloud business unit, uh, which is driving you know, uh, into, as I said, the hyperscalers under you know, Anthony Lai. We've got cloud data center, uh, which is more of the new technologies like HCI and Converge, and you know, object storage technology like Storage Grid. And that's, right now, that's an incredibly fast growing business for us. And then of course we've got you know, our traditional you know, storage software um, you know, infrastructure business where we make products like E-Series and modernizing the data center which is primarily driven with this transition to flash. So you've got three BUs now that are maniacally focused on the different areas of the market where we see here's an immediate opportunity in flash, here's a slightly longer opportunity in things like you know, hybrid cloud and HCI and converged infrastructure and a much longer term bet was how does the cloud really become a piece where we're managing between all of those. So it, it lets us be a lot more nimble between it. It's almost like three sub-businesses where we're going to market. Yeah, Dave, and actually that aligns perfectly with the research we've been doing now for over five years from server sand and true private right. clouds. You've got the hyperscale, you've got the transformation locally, right. yep. uh, and you know, spanning those two, and then you've got the, that transition from the traditional. No, it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's a, I think it's a sound strategy and it'll serve us well in the years to come. There's obviously a lot of noise about artificial intelligence in the marketplace. You've got, you've got some companies trying to position to be the platform for machine intelligence or right. artificial intelligence. What's NetApp's point of view on that? Um, well, certainly we share some of that, but again, I think at the end of the day for us, it, it's much more important about, fine, wherever I'm capturing that artificial intelligence is not likely to be the place where I'm going to do a lot of the analytics and work on it. So it really does come down to, you know, am I moving it up to the cloud to do that work? Where am I making my big insights? where am I mining through it, and then how am I relating that back, whether it's at the edge 
or whether it's at the core data center. And again, we think with ONTAP, with the partners that we're going to market with for AI, for ML, IOT, that's, that's the difference maker for us at the end of the day. It's not that we're just another storage company storing the, you know, the telemetry data off of a car for AI, we're putting it into a format and a form that's usable quickly, efficiently, real time, where you know Tesla can go make a decision on the car right now, not days, weeks, months from now. All right, Bruce, well hey, thanks for coming on theCUBE, really appreciate your time and, uh, and good luck. Enjoyed having me, All right. thank you. Great, thank you. Good to see you guys. All right, keep it right there everybody, we'll be back with our next guest. You're watching VeeamOn 2018, this is theCUBE.